but not, not to me and not to us, but she did know how to speak Norwegian because she was four years old when she came to this country. And, uh, and so uh, there are certain uh, Norwegian expressions that, that I remember from my, from my grandmother. Uh, for, for example, she used to have, a, she used to tell me a little nursery rhyme. She would sort of jump up and jump me up and down on her knee or something. And I would go, Rida Dida Van Kunta Malwan's Hoos, Ekafeya Himela Little Catapus, Pitaraterus, Malarn Maler, Top Arn Galler, Duck and a Dunsar Yenga, O Dicky Pidler Singa. <laughs> what did that mean? I don't know. <laughs> it has something to do about going about riding on a horse or something and the uh, little boy uh, wetting his pants at the end or something. <laughs> but uh, uh, I have uh, I have uh, said that to uh, to Mark and Anne Marie and they get a big laugh out of it because they recognize uh, some of the words and and uh, it's probably not a faithful uh, uh, representation of Norwegian, but it's enough that they can recognize it. So that was my grandma Augustine. She lived with us. Was she nice? Oh, she was a wonderful lady, and and uh, and she she really took care of me when my mother was working. Uh, and then later, my mother moved her beauty shop to our house, and. Uh, and so then my mother was home, but my grandmother was also there. And then we moved to another city. We moved to Springfield, Missouri, and my grandma came along with us. What year was that? That was 1935. Did um, Aunt Mimi live with you when you were a boy? Uh, Aunt Mimi would occasionally live with us. Uh, and uh, she, she lived with us uh, much of the time that we were in Springfield, which was two years. Uh, and uh, she was uh, in college in Springfield at that time. She was, she was attending Southwest Missouri State Teachers College, and so she got some additional education at that time. She, uh, uh, I think, had a two-year teaching certificate when she first started teaching in a little town called Hudson, Minnesota. I think it was Hudson, Minnesota. And, uh, so she was a school teacher, but she eventually got married at the age of 41. And uh, so then she didn't live with us anymore after that. Did she have any kids? She did not have any children. Uh, but I do have cousins. And uh, one, minute, one cousin uh, is, is my cousin Lois Manifel. Uh, that was her name before she got married. And, uh, and then she had a brother named Herbie. And Herbie was about the age of my brother Bob. And Lois was about my age, so it worked out pretty well. Uh, and then I have, uh, I have some cousins named Cameron. And uh, they are the uh, children of my, my, my dad's only sister, Elsie. What's that? What's that? Okay, well, the, uh, I have a, a cousin named uh, Donnie, uh, and, uh, and then I have uh, cousins named uh, uh, Shirley and Betty and Phyllis. And uh, uh, it was fun to go visit them, uh, particularly when, uh, when, uh, when my uncle Cameron uh, owned a... Uh, on a little uh, resort uh, near Minneapolis, and uh, we would go there and uh, go boating. And I remember we could make our own ice cream cones in this store. Boy, that was great. Uh, so those were those were cousins of mine. I have other cousins too, or some older cousins. Uh, so I had I had a lot of family, and when I. When I was growing up, especially in Watertown, I had lots of friends. And there were just a lot of kids in our neighborhood, uh, and there were there were four, there were three three boys who were especially good friends. One was Lori Larson, and then another was Jack Farrell, and another was Bobby Badley. A man, a man, a boy named Lori. 
Yes, Lawrence, but, it, but he was known as Laurie. Abby, did you ever know a boy named Laurie? <laughs> when he grew up, he probably didn't call himself Laurie anymore, but when he was a boy, he wasn't known as Larry, he was known as Laurie. What did you do with those boys? Oh, we, uh, we used to uh, play a lot of games. Uh, we had so many kids in the neighborhood that we would play games like kick the can or uh, cowboys and Indians. How do you play cowboys and Indians? Well, uh, basically you chase each other with guns. <laughs> I mean, with, with, with make-believe guns. You know, so, uh, what about kick the can? How do you play kick that? Kick the can. Well, kick the can's a great game. Uh, first of all, uh, hmm, gosh, I can't quite remember now. But, uh, you kick the can and everybody everybody runs and hides or something like that. I can't quite remember. I've forgotten how to play that game. But it, we, we used to love it. Uh, we played a lot. I know a game like that. Uh -huh. Then there used to be a game called Run Sheep Run, and I can't quite remember how we how we how that went either. But uh, we had a lot of games. Did you play Come Over Come Over Red Rover? Uh, I remember that game vaguely, but I don't know that we played that. Oh, and I'm talking about these four boys, so, uh, uh, Laurie and Jack and Bobby and myself. Uh, we had a uh, we we had our uh, had a little club. I can't remember what we called this club, but uh, there was in, in the backyard, sort of behind all of our houses. Uh, there was a half a barn. I don't know what happened to the other half of the barn. You know what a barn is where they have animals, where they store hay, and so on. Well, half of this barn got cut off, gone. I don't know where it went. But the other half of this barn was just great. And we could climb up there, you know, in the hayloft. We could have meetings up there. And I don't know what we did at those meetings, but it was felt very important having these meetings. <laughs> what, honey? For animals down below? Sorry, Were there animals down below? No, there weren't any animals anymore. There had been, but this was this was a barn that I suppose was part of a farm. And where did they go? Yeah. Where did the animals go? I think the animals moved out to some other farm someplace. Moving this interview after a delightful lunch with the rest of our family, and um, I would like to begin by asking Grandpa Dick to tell us. Just uh, quickly, the different places, the different cities that he and his family lived when he was a little boy, and what years they moved to each one. Well, okay, Abby, I'll tell you about that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I was born in St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, there's a story I have to tell you about that later, uh, about St. Paul. <clears throat> but uh, in 1926, uh, my uh, parents moved to Watertown, South Dakota. And I'll tell you about the trip. We, uh, we drove in my dad's new Model T Ford. That was really a slick car. Was it a car? That was our car. It was a Model T. They and had the Model cars? T. What, honey? They had cars? My dad's car. She said they had cars back then. Oh, they did have cars, yes. Uh, and, and the kind of cars that, that uh, people had, uh, most of them were Model Ts, uh, because uh, uh, Model T Fords were pretty cheap. I think you could buy a, a Model T for about $400, something like that. And <clears throat> so uh, my dad had this car. Now, incidentally, there were still a lot of horse-drawn things at that time. For example, the the uh, the uh, uh, ice truck. We used to every every couple of days, an ice truck would come by to put ice in our ice box because what? they didn't. We didn't have refrigerators originally, and uh, that would be a horse-drawn uh, wagon, actually. Do you understand that, Abby? Yeah. How they would keep their their food cold. You know, we had ice rather than rather than refrigerators. 
So you didn't actually plug your refrigerator in, you just put a big block of ice in to keep stuff cold. That's where we, have you, have we where would you put the ice? On the top. Uh, on the top part of the refrigerator, there was, there was a place to put the ice. And the ice would slowly melt, and uh, the, the, it would drip down some drain pipes they had, and then collect in a pan under the ice box. But that would keep the food fairly cold, not real cold, but fairly cold. But anyway, it would be a horse-drawn wagon sometimes that would uh, deliver the ice. And there were other vehicles that were pulled by horses, but mostly, mostly by the time I was born, uh, cars were very common. But they were very, what you would call, very old-fashioned cars. Did they seem old-fashioned at the time? No, they were the latest wrinkle. And we had, I mean, we had this Model T. Boy, it was slick. And my dad bought it when I was three years old. In 1925. In, in 1925, that's right. Well, actually, it was, it was 1926, but I was still three years old. I didn't turn four until September of 1926. When is your birthday? It's September 13th. So, uh, we, we drove to Watertown, South Dakota in a Model T Ford. And we had several flat tires on the way. And my dad had to go out and change the tire. How did you start that? Did you just turn the key in the ignition? Well, I think that uh, sometimes, I think there was an electric starter. Uh, so it wasn't always necessary to crank it, but sometimes if you had difficulty starting it, you take out this crank and you go to the front of the car, in front of the radiator, and you'd insert this crank into a, a crankshaft and you would turn it. It was kind of hard to turn, but you'd turn it, and then it would start to go and then you'd take the crank, crank out. Have you ever uh, seen a car that did that, Abby? Believe it or not, they still sometimes start small airplanes that way. But um, anyway, we had that Model T Ford, and, and it is what we used to drive out to Watertown. Uh, before long, I can't remember, maybe a year later, uh, my, uh, my daddy uh, bought a new car. And uh, we didn't uh, have a, a Ford then for a long time. We had... Uh, uh, we had... Uh, uh, Chevrolet. And every year or two, my dad would buy a new car. So then we had another Chevrolet, and then we had an Oldsmobile, and then we had another Oldsmobile. As I, as I told you, I thought I was a rich kid in those days. My dad always had new cars. Did he sell the old ones every time? Uh, well, he just traded them in. You weren't just piling up cars in the garage? No, no, he would uh, replace it each time. <laughs> And the longest period that we went without a new car was about five years, from 1930 to uh, 1935. Finally, in 1935, we got another new car and we moved. We got a Ford V8, a 1935 Ford V8. Oh, that was a pretty slick car. And, uh, and we drove in that car to Springfield, Missouri. And <clears throat> that's where we lived for two years. Now, just so, to and sorry, in what year? 1935, and we were there until 1937. Was so I just want to make sure we've got the sequence. You're in St. Paul from 1920. Uh, okay, we were in St. Paul from 1922 when I was born until 1926, and then we were in Watertown, South Dakota, well, from 19. We were a rich kid for a little while. That, what's that? You were a rich kid for a little while. Yes, I was for a little while. And then from 1926 uh, until 1935, we lived in Watertown, South Dakota. And as I've told you, that was a nice place to, to, to be growing up. And there was a nice lake outside called Lake Campesca. I'll tell you about that later. Uh, so, in 1935, we drove in our Ford V8 to Springfield, Missouri. And there we lived for two years. Then in 19, 
37. My dad got a 